Hello, everybody. It's been uh, a while since we talked. Uh, really weird weather, man. Uh, rain and sun and rain and sun and on top of all the rain we've had. Uh, hopefully, all you guys are staying safe and not too soggy. Um, I don't have a whole lot of I guess, huge stuff to talk about this time. Um, it just we haven't. I uh, had a Dan and friends in a long time. I figured I'd just touch base and update you on some of the things that are going on. Mostly routine, but hopefully you find some of them interesting. And uh, it's just good to chat again. Like always, uh, you can uh, chat, uh, use your chat function and put up questions. And I'll try to answer those. Uh, I got a shorter list it's, uh, of questions than I normally do. And that also kind of reflects that we haven't had too many, too much craziness going on. Um, probably jump right in there with Joint Commission. Uh, we were uh, we got right in our window there at the end of January, first of February, and uh, pretty much got some good information that they were running quite a ways behind. And then uh, a few weeks after that, got a little more information that we've been further behind. And while they don't ever tell you exactly when they come, we have been able to get some indication that we're looking at uh, April, May. So uh, we're, you know, we had everything ready to go. And, uh, and I appreciate everybody's hard work. The house looked great. And I know everybody had everything just so. I think we, we can't keep it quite that perfect for that long a period, but uh, there's still some things that we can work on. And of course we need to, uh, you know, say on our P's and Q's, but we're gonna do another push here, probably the end of March, April, uh, make sure we get everything just so and see if we can hold that for a while. Uh, in the meantime, everybody that uh, did all the work to get ready, uh, I uh, thank you. And we're gonna do some more tweaking and make sure we have a good survey. So we're looking at the uh, last part of March through probably the end of April. I'm, I'm saying that might be our window, but hey, you know, um, uh, your guess is, well, I'm hoping I have a pretty decent insight on this. Uh, what uh, has been occurring for sure is that we've been extremely busy. Um, that has been very, very steady. Our house census has stayed up. Our ED holds are up, our overflows, I don't know if you can call them overflows because there are pretty much always patients in them. Uh, that's held steady now for almost a year. Um, our emergency room volume is back to pre-COVID levels. And interestingly enough, our urgent cares that we run in KL and at PCMC, they're seeing substantially more patients than they've seen in the past. And um, that has not really impacted our volume here in the emergency room. So lots of health needs out there providing a lot of care. Um, our cardiology program, our STEMI, our heart attack coverage is uh, very robust. We're pretty much covering the whole island. And for all of you who are uh, pitching in and affecting uh, that change and impacting those patients, I just say we're saving lives. And I know that we're very busy and uh, we are taking care of patients across the island, but it is very good work. Uh, we're caring for our family, friends, and neighbors. So kudos to you guys out there that are helping with that. Yeah, uh, I got a chat comment about remote mic, and I have Nate here with me, and so he'll log that one. Um, I heard that uh, when I did a, a, a media thing that, that it is echoing in this room. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn the AC off here. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, actually, I think it did help. So, uh, but nothing I said was all that important that I have to repeat myself. Just kidding. Um, but uh, we'll uh, check on the remote mic and see if we can get the audio a little bit better. Um, yeah, nice little reminder there from Elena. Uh, it is hospital week coming up and we need you guys to select your hospital week gift. I got a few pictures I wanna uh, share with you. I just wanna do some shout outs to, uh, um, um, 
a number of people. And I also want to mention, I get this question a lot. We've been so busy. Hey, what's going on with uh, uh, the workforce? What are you guys doing to make sure we have enough staff? We have had a lot of travelers uh, here and uh, we have to obviously make sure that we have staff available to care for our patients. And we have not been sitting on our hands if you work on the floors, uh, you certainly have seen our new graduates. I have a picture I'm sharing here with you guys now of our uh, nurse residency program. And uh, we did two cohorts, uh, ended up with 42 new graduates. Uh, a lot of young people are learning how to be really good nurses. And I know we have a great nurse training program. And for all the experienced people out there working and helping to train our next generation, I really appreciate the efforts that you're putting in. Um, we should see some of our traveler staff, which by the way, we do appreciate it. We couldn't do without. Those numbers will reduce a bit over the course of the spring as our new grads uh, you know, get uh, fully into staff. And uh, we have plans for another large cohort here um, for next year. Uh, we are very grateful to our two nursing schools. Uh, without them, we would just really be in a bad state. And we think it's wonderful that we get to employ you know, members of our community, our young people, um, and you know have them become part of our Ohana here. So. Excited about these guys, they're doing a great job and they're our future. Uh, we have of our bedside workforce out of our new graduates, uh, um, almost half of them have come from our nurse training program over the last few years. So uh, a new generation of caregivers for our community. Uh, we also have been working on uh, our critical care areas. So uh, those of you who are not, uh, uh, clinical, what generally happens, you get a new graduate, they come in and they learn, they often learn in uh, like our, our basic units, like our medical unit, our surge unit, the surge unit, and then they move on to our critical care units, which require a pretty lengthy training program to specialize, whether it be the ICU or the ER or the OR or the obstetrics area. And uh, we run uh, two or three of these programs every year, and you know, a picture here of our latest critical care training program class and just shout out to all those folks that uh, invest in um, these individuals and as they uh, take their nursing care you know to another level uh, we also have not uh, forgotten about our nurse aides our cnas that are part of our care team they can't do without them and we've uh, been short of those positions for really almost the last year uh, a lot of changes out in the labor market, and we're competing with a lot of other providers and other healthcare organizations. So we started a paid nurse aid training program. Um, so kudos to nursing, to Angie Kane and others that have put together this program uh, where we can train our own. And uh, I think we're four cohorts in, and we're excited about this. Again, really helping our community out, really helping out our healthcare Ohana. Um, so before I get into I got like three or four more pictures, I wanted to put pictures up here and really put some uh, thanks out there to all you areas that have been caring for overflow place patients. Basically, you're caring for patients who aren't in your usual scope of work. Um, I know everyone has been stressed with this. Uh, you know, all of our units have been very full and not to diminish all they're doing. But for those of you in short stay who have managed to uh, run our uh, normal short stay and pack you operations and operate uh, basically as a nursing unit within your area. Thank you. And then also we've got folks in our obstetrics unit. Uh, what was an occasional uh, uh, visit by uh, medical patients have now become unfortunately pretty standard. So we have one of our flex nurses and also our OB staff pitch in to care for these um, for these patients and it really helps out. And again, I know that's not your usual, but really appreciated. And certainly our TCU, our transitional care unit has become its own unit. We have a picture of our regular staff down there and uh, they are rapidly becoming uh, just like uh, any of of our other units and really filling a very important niche there. Uh, we've over the last couple of months, we've you know had since our census is 18 to 20 patients, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. So all you guys in those areas, I uh, just want to know that your work and your efforts are appreciated. And until we get some new beds built here, uh, I think uh, 
we're going to be relying on you to help us uh, care for our community. And uh, on a, a good note, uh, we I just want to put a plug in here for our retail pharmacy. So you guys have seen that space in the lobby. I'll just give you a little background on how that's supposed to all work. Um, uh, basically, uh, for our employees, our, one, you can sign up there and basically, if you want, uh, fill all your prescriptions. We're trying to move to a model where you actually can call in your order and then you can either pick it up on your break or we can even deliver it to you to your workplace. So the convenience is something that I think that uh, hopefully works really well for you and you can also, uh, your family members, uh, just like any other um, uh, pharmacy, you can uh, fill your family members' prescriptions there if they want to transfer it. And what we do with the proceeds from the pharmacy and so forth, we reinvest it in our services. A uh, reason most hospitals have retail pharmacies are so they can provide that convenience for their patients and their employees, but also any profits they make get put right back into our mission. So you're supporting us, um, you're supporting the hospital, and you know it's just as convenient as that. You don't have to stand in those lines at Lawrence or Walmart or whatnot where you get your prescription filled. Um, we're moving to where we've already started some of this and we're gonna do more. Um, obviously, we, we're trying to have it where our emergency room uh, patients are able to uh, fill their prescriptions as they leave. So there's a, uh, a window there where hopefully their prescriptions have been set in advance. You pick them up on your way out, which is really helpful. Fortunately, that's not 24-7, but it is for a significant part of the day. Um, and then uh, over the next few months, we're also going to be offering a service where our inpatients, as you get near discharge, instead of having to, as you take your mom home or you go home, you have to stop at the, you know, at the pharmacy to fill your prescriptions. Uh, we, if, you know, if our patients would like, uh, we basically will fill those prescriptions and have them waiting at the bedside. So when you discharge, you go home with your meds, your instructions, and it's a much better experience for our patients. And for our clinic uh, uh, patients as well, uh, we want them to be able to fill their prescriptions uh, uh, when they come to our clinic here, especially if they're new, it just may, it helps with medication compliance. So we have a lot of uh, really positive things we can do. And last but not least, I sound like I'm chilling for a business, but it is a business. Um, there's a retail section and you get a nice employee discount for basically all that stuff you get, you know, at in, in you know, when you're standing in line, like at Long's and they have, I don't know, fiber and suppositories and band-aids and all those different medically related items. Uh, a lot of them will count toward your uh, uh, your healthcare savings account. And we're trying to set that up so it's really convenient. So you get your title and all whatnot. So uh, dip in there if you need anything. And uh, we're also excited that Byron is back in business. He has a nice new place there in the cubby hole. Um, I think uh, he's did a nice job setting it up. It's very clean and neat and uh, the hot dogs are back. So I think we're uh, pretty close to getting our lobby completed. And uh, those are the positive things that you know we have to talk about there. Uh, I will mention, because it came up as a question that um, there's part of our lobby with our, um, uh, where we check in for admitting that, especially if someone's hard of hearing, that you can uh, hear people's conversations as they're talking to admitting or getting questions answered about their bills and whatnot. And we understand that's really too loud, especially for a certain part of our population. So we're working on some solutions to have better privacy there. Uh, it is echoey and we're aware of the issue. So um, we'll be working on uh, kind of uh, getting some of the bugs ironed out in that space. Uh, additionally, uh, the, I had a great suggestion from someone about uh, would our security and our screeners uh, be working more interchangeably, and we're looking at that uh, possibility here, especially at the front where you come in at the main entrance. Uh, so a lot of good suggestions here, and as a lot of the things that we've done in the hospital, we get them started, and then hopefully we keep working to make them better. All right. Okay, so uh, a few more, a couple more things, and then I'll get to questions. As um, as I mentioned, we don't have a whole whole lot to cover today. Uh, so Pink Palace is down. I think uh, for those of you who've seen that eyesore for years, uh, I took a lot of satisfaction from seeing that um, 
that probably Dylan get off our campus. And I hope for those of you who work on this uh, west end of the campus, uh, light parking up there. So the parking lot is open. Uh, it is, uh, I think, 7 a to 7 p parking, but it's quite convenient if you work on this side of the campus. Uh, part of what we're doing here is, is anticipation of hopefully being able to do some pretty significant pro uh, projects expanding the hospital, and to do that, we have to have parking. And part of the strategy and the plan is to honestly drop our buildings that are really past their useful life. Uh, we're looking at a process to take down our West Wing, which is the other building that was built in the 40s that honestly is... Um, you know, it's it's really on its last leg. So uh, these areas uh, will help us with parking and to manage construction. And then over time, hopefully the campus will fully come together. Um, I'll have more information on, you know, future projects and so forth uh, after the end of ledge session here, which is about, oh, but we should know pretty something pretty well, usually by the end of April. So most likely our next town hall, uh, or Dan and friends will be, um, around that time frame, and I can update you on uh, how the session turned out, what our finances look like, and also uh, what CIP or construction projects we have planned. All right, um, I don't see other questions, so I'm going to move right on to questions here. We're uh, going to have a relatively brief one. Um, so, by the way, for those of you sending the questions, thank you for doing that. Somebody asked about uh, when's the leaky roof above the ED going to be fixed or redone? We have put out RFP for that. Uh, we're waiting on responses, so there's an uh, active effort to get that roof uh, replaced, uh, or actually uh, more than repair. I think we're going to probably just re redo the entire roof over the ED. So that's being worked on. We know that you're right, when the rain's getting bad, we end up getting a leak. I think it's over 15 and 16. So uh, we can uh, hopefully get that uh, chronic problem fixed. And then uh, another question was, does HMC, HHSC ever see a new feature doing a parking structure for the staff and patients? Most likely we won't do uh, you know, what you call a parking garage or multi-story structure. And the reason for that is we've been blessed with a pretty substantial amount of land on our campus. Most um, hospitals and others do parking structures is because they're confined on their campus in the middle of town or there's a lot of, um, or they just don't have access to land because of other structures or businesses around them, so they build up. Um, that's quite expensive for us. Uh, we still have some land available uh, uh, at, that's adjacent to the, the relatively new parking lot on the, let's see, on the south side of Wainui Nui over by East Hawaii Health's building. So we can expand there. And then we also have some potential like the parking lots that we put on this side of the, uh, of the street, um, perhaps where the West Wing is. And then also uh, we did where the Pink Palace was. So we'll see how that all lasts us. Uh, in general though, it's cheaper for us to, uh, you know, make a bigger flat parking lot than it is to build a parking garage. But uh, I've been asked that many times. It's not a stupid question at all. Um, it's just most likely we won't be doing that anytime real soon. Uh, I have a bunch of questions about masks, and I'll kind of cover them all as one. Uh, I did get a question about uh, our medical oncologist who is leaving us, unfortunately. Um, we will be able to secure full-time oncologists and to support them. The short answer is yes, I believe we can. We've uh, actually uh, pretty routinely been staffing three oncologists, two of which are Locals um, and one, uh, Dr. Lakova, has been with us a good while over Satchis a year ago. Um, but uh, we have uh, uh, several prospects uh, for recruitment. Medical oncology is a difficult um, uh, specialty to fill across the country. It's not just here. And we've had uh, quite a bit of success in some specialties, but others, they are just highly competitive. Uh, gastroenterology and interventional cardiology have also been challenges. We've had some success, but we're not uh, where we need to be yet. Um, we, though, are not giving up, and uh, I think we will eventually get enough success in those areas. I'm excited about the new medical oncology floor opening up uh, in the new building, and I hope that will also be attractive to new oncologists that want to come here and practice.
Let's see. Uh, is security doing routine checks throughout the day, and night at the cottage? So, um, uh, just a couple there. So, just an update there. And some of you may not know, but the medical staff cottage, which you can now see, that's behind the pink palace. Uh, was, has been uh, completely reworked by our renovation team. They did a nice job and uh, our finance team, as well as some, our, I believe our UR and some of our other staff are located in the cottage. Uh, I think we have uh, 25, 30 folks working up in that building and there's a new parking area up there as well. So the question is the security round through there. Um, the short answer is yes, that's on their cycle. They do go through there, uh, use their cars and, and uh, make that part of their circuit. If you need them, certainly you can call and they can come up and make a special trip. Uh, I had a question here, and this is a general, what is being done to promote staff retention and improve quality of work-life balance? So um, just a couple of comments on that. As far as staff retention, I think uh, there's many things that drive staff retention. Part of it is being a good place to work. Um, I know work, no workplace is perfect, but we put a lot of effort into making sure our leaders uh, are people that you want to work for and that we respect uh, your contributions and that people feel like that what they do matters. Um, as far as other things that drive people to stay, as far you know, your benefits, your, your salaries and stuff, you know, we work with our unions and so forth. We are a state organization. Um, and we also look at market rates and conditions to make sure we're competitive as best we can. Uh, we're in an uh, environment where we don't uh, set rates of pay. We have uh, two unions and a number of bargaining units where we have collective bargaining agreements that sets the base pay. Um, and uh, so when it comes to pay, a lot of that is, is driven by almost how the state handles its entire public workforce. Um, as far as work-life balance, uh, that one's a little bit tricky. I mean, a good deal of that is personal in how you view your work. Uh, but as far as your flexibility about when you work, your working conditions and so forth, or your work rules, uh, for most of our employees, that's uh, done through your collective bargaining agreements. You know, what shifts you do, when your breaks are, how you're, you know, you're paid for overtime, all those different things are collectively bargained for. So um, we can do some things and some things we cannot, but we hope and I believe overall, this is a good place to work and we want to work here. Let's see. Why are the options for hospital weeks the same, similar every year? Well, there you go. That's the tricky one. I mean, so we get a gift to roughly 1,500 people, right? So how do you find, how do you get something to 1,500 people where most of them, the vast majority of them will like them, right? So do you ask why are they similar? Well, you know, people like them clothing and most everybody likes a jacket or a shirt or a raincoat um, and and then we usually have always some gift it's like kind of picnic related you know it's a cooler it's a backpack uh, we actually go we go there are several companies that offer a list of things that you can offer and they're pretty much all stuff like this so we're more than uh, open to uh, people's suggestions on other gifts um, but it generally has to be something that is uh, non-controversial, most people would like, and within a certain price range. Okay, so I am open to ideas. Uh, I actually didn't sign up to, that's probably not my expertise. But in general, what I've seen is just from looking around at different people, the various scrubs that we've given and the jackets and the, uh, are, seem to be well utilized. Um, and so that's pretty much why we do that. But uh, you won't insult anyone if you uh, send some suggestions. You can send them my way. If you uh, responded to the survey, you can just email Mari or somebody in admin, or you can let our HR director know because she also was involved in selecting gifts. What we have tried to do, by the way, though, is give you better gifts so you didn't end up with a bunch of junk that, you know, those $5 gifts that end up in the trash. So uh, I like to see some of our gifts we gave four or five years ago, people are still wearing them. So that's part of what we're trying to do with our selections is make sure that uh, the gifts are useful and they're not just Mickey Max that you end up throwing in the trash after a couple months. Let's see. 
Oh, by the way, we can't do gift certificates as considered income in their state ethics rules for that because someone did mention um, if we could get gift certificates to like local grocery stores and uh, we can't do that, sorry. Um, I did the lobby thing. So everything else I believe on here is related to masks. Okay, so the first question is, I have people asking me why we still have to wear masks, and then I have people asking me why we wear masks more, and people saying why don't we enforce it more, and why we only wear it in some places and not in other. So I think the, these are all, you know, everybody has an opinion on this. I understand um, um, COVID, depending on where you, what your view is of COVID and the pandemic and your risk to you personally and whatnot, um, understand there's a lot of different opinions. So we have to look at it from a healthcare organization. And so part of what we have to do is see what's the health and the community standard uh, for healthcare organizations like hospitals, right? So there's CMS guidelines we have to look at. There's our own Department of Health has certain guidelines. Across our state, uh, what are all the other hospitals doing? Because the things known as a community standard, which we have to follow, or we are wise to follow, because you don't look like you don't want to seem like that you are being careless when you're delivering care. So all of our hospitals in the state, they all have their uh, staff wear masks. Some in patient care areas and with some exceptions and others in whenever you're inside of the door at all. So there's a little bit of variation there. Our stance is that we wear a mask uh, when we are in patient care areas and we've designated areas that are not. So one of the questions was why in Ohana Cafe do people don't wear a mask all the time? Well, that has been treated as more of a break room because you eat there just like you eat in your own break rooms and it's not a direct patient care space. I understand some people agree with that and some people don't agree with it. Some people think that it's silly that we wear masks and yet you go everywhere else in the community and all across the country, no one wears masks. Well, healthcare is different. And, uh, you know, for some people, if you catch COVID, it can certainly be um, a, a troublesome to them or even life threatening in certain types of conditions. So I think it is a reasonable thing to do for our caregivers to wear a mask on the units and so forth. So I don't see that changing anytime soon. But also as in a nod to reality and what's going on in the larger public, that's why we've made exceptions for uh, administrative areas or areas where you're not around direct patients. Is it perfect? No, it's not. Um, are there uh, times where people forget where they're in one area or the other, or maybe they're not as intensely focused on COVID the way we used to be. So their uh, attention to where their mask is up or down is as rigorous as it used to be, probably not. And we likely, if we're gonna have that rule, we need to work on that. But you can kind of ask what's the thinking behind it. We try to strike a balance here between, you know, uh, what's the, uh, good for patients and what's good for our employees and what the reality is in the community. Um, so we've got some questions here. Let's go, can we go down a little bit further? Uh, Cleveland Clinic has information on masks. That's good. Uh, so it's a nice link. I don't know who put that up there, but that's great. So someone can take a look at that. Um, and then also uh, there was a question there about um, uh, umbrellas. Absolutely, we can offer umbrellas next year. So we will uh, pick out a good, nice logo umbrella and we will have that as an option for you guys for next um, a hospital week gift. So there you go, great suggestion. Um, is there any talk with the unions about, yes, and I'm sorry that question was given. Um, it says, I, I, I overlooked it, it says, I see that HEA is an arbitration for temporary hazard pay for DOE members. Yes, and there's also been a couple other ones with, uh, I think, County of, of Maui and others regarding hazard pay uh, from uh, our, the whole COVID pandemic. That's being worked, that's being worked uh, in various agencies. I know that has come up with both HGA, HGA and UPW. And that really impacts really almost all public workers to some form or the others. Um, and so we're waiting to see how that turns out. To be honest, I really don't know how it's going to turn out. I think it's kind of up in the air, depending on who you talk to. I think we'll just have to pay attention to that. I understand why uh, uh, people would be asking the questions because it involves money. I don't think I see any other questions. Um, and let me just check my notes if there's anything 
that um, I don't think there's a whole lot that I've left out. Um, I just, uh, it's been a while since we talked, so I just want to reiterate to you guys, I really appreciate everything you do. Um, what you do really makes an enormous difference uh, to our community and uh, all the hard work and efforts that you put in. Um, I not only appreciate, but I know that your community appreciates too. So thank you. Uh, stay dry, and we'll talk here in a few weeks, or actually maybe a couple of months. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.